Hey guys, it's Ernst. Just wanted to do a quick follow-up to the original uh, dual PC stream audio setup video that I did a while back now. Uh, the reason why I wanted to redo it is because in that video I had some extra wires that I didn't really point out in the description and the way that I had it set up in the video is not the way I had it set up in the diagram. So I wanted to redo it explaining the wires, how they're run, and uh, also answer some of the questions that I think were pretty common questions that were in the original video. So why don't I go ahead and get started. Um, before I get started, I just want to say that each one of these vertical lines represents an input into the mixer. So we have four mono inputs in these first four verticals. And then we have two stereo inputs, but are technically two inputs per. Um, mono inputs are one ear or one signal. Uh, stereo is left and right. Um, so I think that's important because the outputs for both your alt and your main out are stereo, but your inputs for each of the individual are mono, except for line five, six, and seven, eight. That'll be important later when we describe console and, uh, all, uh, and changing stream volumes, etc. So the very first line is my microphone line. I have an ElectroVoice RE320 microphone with an XLR cable coming out the back. That runs into a cable down below my desk um, that attaches to a CL1 by Cloudlifter, which is a gain booster for dynamic microphones. If you guys are running dynamic microphones, I highly recommend it. Um, the amps that are on the mixer itself are probably not uh, big enough in order to provide the, the necessary voltage for a dynamic microphone, although for condenser microphones, it's perfectly fine. Out of my CL1 goes into a voice processor. Uh, this has a little bit of an auto-tune loop on it, and I'll explain it uh, on the mixer. You guys probably won't need this, but let, you know it's one of those things that you can potentially do. So out of the Cloudlifter 1, it goes into this, out of this, into my mixer directly. This whole entire line controls my microphone. Uh, the very first knob that we have, which is probably the most important knob, is the gain for this line. This gain sets the volume that comes in from this line no matter what. That way when I set this to zero or 100% essentially, um, there's no modification, there's no reduction in volume. It's the, it's the raw volume that comes in on that line. We have a compressor knob up here, which I don't use. We have EQ knobs that are in each one of these three blue knobs, a high, a mid, and a low, and that's for each of the lines that are here on the mixer. We have this red knob, which operates how much signal I want to send to the aux send output. Then we have this orange knob, which represents how much signal that I would like to send to the FX output or the FX processor that's on this board. You'll see that I have all of this down except for this channel. Uh, this channel, um, I use it for that auto-tune loop, so that's why it's there. Then we have a pan knob, which allows you to choose left ear or right ear. Then we have probably the most important button on this mixer as it relates to dual PC stream setups, and that is the mute slash alt 3-4 button. So when I hit this button, the very first thing it does is it mutes this line from the main mix. So anything that doesn't have this button pressed down will go to the main output. The main output has a stereo connection on the back through analog, and it also has a USB connection on the back, which we're gonna have going to our stream PC. This fader controls how much volume reduction, or if I go above the zero line, how much decibels it's going to add prior to the overall main mix output right here, or alternate output. Um, when I first did this video, the reason why I chose the Behringer X1204 is I needed two separate controlled sources that I could potentially listen to in my headphones. And the Behringer X1204 was the first mixer on the scale of mixers that can do it in terms of price. This mixer is about 179 US uh, dollars. If you look at Mackie or Yamaha or some of the other th others that are out there, Usually you don't get that type of functionality until about three or $400. So I went with this one and that's the reason why. I needed dual output for a particular one single line in um, so that I can listen to different things than what I potentially have plugged in. 
I wanted some things to send out to the stream PC, but me to hear a selected group of inputs. So that's why I chose this mixer. It's the one I, I've recommended to dozens of streamers now that have purchased um, this type of a setup. And it's actually really good. It's, it's a really good mixer. I've been really, really happy with it. So now we're gonna move over. Um, I do wanna point out, go ahead and ignore this line. Again, it's for my auto-tune loop. It's not something that most people are gonna have. So ignore this. This connector does not matter to a dual PC setup. And also ignore this aux send to uh, cable. I'm using that also for the auto-tune loop. So um, ignore those because in the diagram I don't include them but we'll go ahead and hop into the other one. So we'll go into this channel here, which is line five and six. Line five and six is my game PC. Coming out of my game PC, I have a ground loop isolator. And the purpose of that is to reduce noise on the lines going into my mixer and also going into my stream PC. So I have in the back of my game PC, a split. I have a little Y splitter that takes a stereo cable that's plugged into my headphone or my line out slot on my game PC, and it's split into two different um, lines. One of them goes directly to the stream PC to the line input on the stream PC. The other one goes into a uh, stereo to mono cable splitter, and then that goes into a buzz box, which uh, it may be a little bit redundant, but given the fact that it's going into the mixers and into my ears, I want to make sure that there is no noise on the line. And then coming out of the buzz box, we have these two wires here that goes into line 5-6. You'll see that for this particular line, I have this button pressed in, and so the mute light is on, which means that this signal is actually being sent out on the alternate channel. Um, coming out of the stream PC, um, I have no buzz box, or I have no um, ground loop isolator. I have a splitter that goes into a buzz box, and then out of the bu buzz box are these two lines. They go into line 7, 8. They're also on the alternate channel, as you can see with that uh, yellow light showing up. Then what I have is the alternate source button pressed in on my headphone source. So this area here on the microphone, or on the mixer, uh, allows me to select which source I want to listen to in my headset. I can listen to the alternate channel by itself, I can listen to uh, alternate and the main, or I can just turn alternate off and listen to the main. Um, the way that I have it set up is the microphone is going on the main output to the stream PC. I have the line 5-6 is coming in, but being broadcast out on the alternate channel out of the stream PC into the mixer is on the alternate channel. So I listen to the alternate channel and what this allows is the direct feed from the game PC to the stream PC can be listened on OBS through a line in. The USB from this mixer into the stream PC is the microphone in on the stream PC and then the desktop audio on the stream PC is just default Realtek speakers um, that are actually being broadcast into my mixer, but OBS can pick that up directly from the source in Windows. So this is the essential setup. Um, this controls all of the alt volumes together. So uh, effectively anything that has the, the lights on it, it'll control that mix all together. This knob controls how much of the stream PC I hear. This fader controls how much of the game PC I hear, and I can change this around. So like, if I'm, if I'm playing music on my stream PC, which is usually what I do, I can turn this up if I like the song or like I'm in a part of a game that it doesn't matter, or I can turn it down if there's if the game gets intense. Or if notifications are going off, uh, you can keep it at normal. If they're going crazy, you can turn your notifications down. Um, obviously, there's some games that you wanna play that maybe have really loud volume, even if you turn master mix down or something along those lines, you can always turn the game volume down as well. Now, these two things can be turned down all via the alt, but essentially because you're only listening to the alt channel in your headphones, you can also do it just using this headphone knob. This headphone knob controls how much volume uh, is being sent to your headphones. So with that being said, that's the essential setup. Um, I keep once I had my gain set, 
I keep this knob essentially at zero unless I want to mute my mic, I'll send that down. If I want to mute my mic on both on the game PC, I turn this down. Um, if I want to do both, I turn both of them off. This will also do it for the stream PC. So this will mute your mic. This will mute your mic on the game PC. This will mute your mic on the, on the game PC or this will mute your mic on the game PC. I like to keep this where it's at. I like to keep this as where it's at and then just use these for that microphone line. That way I know I'm always broadcasting whatever else I'd like to choose for those things. So now I wanna take a time, take some time and um, answer some of the questions that I got on the first video a lot. Um, the first question was, can I use a USB microphone or USB headset to operate this? The answer is no. Um, there's no USB inputs. There's only XLR or quarter inch, which means you can't use USB input microphones and there's no USB output for headphone. All we have is a quarter inch stereo connector. Um, you'll see it's a stereo connector. It's got two black lines on the connector. That means there's a left and right signal um, divider, which allows you to listen to left and right audio. If this has one black line, um, then it's a mono cable. And that's important because it's only gonna send audio out of one ear, left or right. Um, that being said, your headphone output here is stereo and it's a quarter inch. So if you have a one eighth inch, which is the smaller version of this connector, you simply need to get an adapter. If you have a quarter inch, you're already good to go from your headphone perspective. If you have a headset that is one eighth inch, it's a small connector and it has three black lines, you need to get a special adapter before getting the quarter inch adapter. You need to actually convert your three line headset eighth inch output into two separate outputs, which is a one eighth inch stereo for your headset or your headphones, I should say, and uh, another one for your microphone. And that's because the connector that's built into headsets that have a built in microphone has three separate signals. It's got a microphone, it's got a left out and a right out. So you need to break those up in with a connector. Um, the new Imgur that I'm going to have linked in this description shows you exactly what that looks like. The other question I got a lot is, can I hook a console up to this? The answer is yes. Um, there's a couple different ways to do it and how you want to control it, but essentially what you do is there's a little USB adapter that you can get on Amazon. It's about seven to $10, depending on where you're from. That's US dollars. You plug that into the front of your console, and then there is another cable that you need. It's a stereo to dual mono, very similar to the cables that you have here going into your buzz box. And then you would just plug that into line two and three here and operate those as left and right channels that you would use here. So you would wanna keep those on the main because you want to, um, I, I'm sorry, you would wanna put those over to the alt so you can listen to the, uh, the console through the system. And then you would use your HDMI cable out of the console going into a cap card in order for OBS to capture this. So you can do this. Um, you would of course control the volume from the cap card source um, in your stream, but then you would control the volume of the console via these knobs. The other question that I got a lot of was, can I control my stream audio via the mixer? And the answer is yes, but there's a little bit of a caveat. With this particular mixer, there's only eight inputs. Um, and in order to get stereo, you need to have left and right. So we already have two here and two here. If you wanna to listen to audio and control audio all on this mixer using the faders for your stream, then what you actually need to do is get a bigger mixer. So this is an eight input. I recommend going to the 12 input. It's the next stage up if you wanted to do that. And the way that you would do it is you would take this mono cable here and you would get a mono female to dual mono male splitter. And essentially for each one of these instrument cables, these each one of these four, you would put a splitter on and split it off. So you would have game PC going into line five, six, and then you'd also have game PC going into two, three. And then you would have stream PC going into seven, eight, and then you would also have it going into four, nine, of course, if you had a nine. Um, and what that, and then you would keep those on the main mix, both the game PC and the stream PC, 
and then you would have another set of those split on the alt mix um, for five, six, seven, eight. And that allows you to listen to that signal independently of the stream and then also control them independently of the stream. The one downside is that when you do the setup this way, you're only gonna have one input into your stream PC. So if you were to do that with the 12 input mixer instead of the eight input mixer, you would have just the, the microphone audio that comes in and it would have all of the, the mix on it. So it would have your microphone, it would have the game PC, and it would have the stream PC. But the good news from that is that you would technically be able to get rid of the split signal out of the game PC that I mentioned early on. You'd, you wouldn't have to split that audio. You can just run everything in and split it at the, at the mixer. Those are the primary questions that I got from the first video. I wanted to address them here as well as go over this setup. Um, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you guys don't like the video, hit dislike and comment as to why. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to put my um, my Twitter in the description as well. You can hit me up on Twitter. Um, I've, I've helped a ton of people with this. And a lot of people really like this version versus the software version. Um, Obviously, it's a little bit more expensive, but the beauty is is that you don't have to set up anything before you stream. You can just be playing on your game PC in the morning, say you want to stream, fire up your stream PC. Everything's already going to be set up. You don't have to worry about setting up voice meter or some of the other stuff or setting audio repeaters once you want to stream. You could just go ahead and, and power down and it'll all be functional independent of these two things. Again, if you guys have any questions, hit me up. Talk to you later. Peace.